Um, so I'm an animator and a live, ac and a live action director, um, and I predominantly uh, do music videos. Um, I've done some tour visuals, uh, commercials, and this is one of my first short films. Um, this is a rotating aubergine, um, which this is a bit of a shameless plug for a new project coming soon called um, Spin the Ob, which is going to be an interactive site with sound. Um, but I also thought that this was a good way of communicating a bit about my practice. Um, this is a hundred stills run together to make the rotation, and each still is generated in a completely different way. So some of them are painted, some of them are drawn, some of them are CG, some of them are made of paper, um, some of them are made out of elastic bands. Um, and I love that idea of um, hybrid within animation um, in terms of technique, and with also within live action as well. Um, I'm here to talk about Private Parts, um, which is uh, an animated documentary about sexuality. Um, we're talking vaginas and penises, um, and it is all voice, real voice recorded interviews that have then been characterised as, geni as genitals. Um, so I'm going to talk about where the idea first came from, um, and it was a long, long time ago, it was when I was about 14, um, and I'd watched Cruel Intentions. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a steamy film. Uh, and I was ill with the flu in bed, and I went on this crusade to achieve my first orgasm. Um, and it took ages. Um, <laughs> Because, as I'm sure most of you know, vaginas are incredibly complicated and take a while to work out. Um, and then I recovered from the flu, had, had this amazing experience, trotted into school, which was a state school in central, in central London, um, and sat down with my group of female friends and told them. And their reaction was such a surprise to me. It was one of kind of communal disgust. And I'd, we'd all known that boys have been wanking since year six and telling us to like suck it and like, <laughs> and like you know, communally doing it. It's like WWF and stuff. And we would, I, I was actually like deeply saddened. And it was my first uh, kind of wake up call that sexual inequality is, is an issue. Um, and then as, as I moved on uh, and grew up a bit, um, and now I'm in my mid-twenties, um, still many of my nearest and dearest female friends are, for some reason, unable to connect with their bodies and um, experience the pleasure that their bodies are capable of, and climax with partners, and some of them haven't even managed to climax on their own. These are really confident young women. Um, so I kind of just wanted to explore why this was happening. Um, then I saw this wonderful piece of work called The Great Wall of Vagina. This is just a section of it, um, but it's huge. Um, and it's by an artist called Jamie um, McCartney uh, in, in uh, Brighton. And basically, I, this, this, I found this super, super refreshing because I feel like I'd only ever seen vaginas either in a pornographic context or a medical context. And I'd always been kind of self-conscious about my labia. And it was really nice, it was really nice to see, like, that, like everything, vaginas are super diverse, like noses, eyes, bums, hair colour, etc. Um, so then I, set, I read the vagina monologues uh, quite proudly on the underground. Um, <laughs> and, and, yeah, I found it to be super moving, really accessible, um, also really funny and split up into really accessible chapters. So there's a pubes chapter, there's a clitoris chapter, and I reference these chapters in, in my film. Um, but I felt like if you're reading the vagina monologues, you're already really, really engaged with the idea of female sexuality and sexual liberation. And I wanted to make something that was accessible and easily shared for people who might not necessarily see themselves as a feminist or be particularly engaged with the issue. Um, and I also felt like it was important to um, include male voices and a male stance point, because I feel like this issue affects everyone. While I was researching, and I'd started to uh, do voice recordings of, of loads of friends and some people, also some people I didn't know, this app was released, um, which is called Happy Playtime. 
which involves this character, which I don't know if it's that great as a character, but it's a, it's a vulva, so it's the vagina and clitoris. And it is basically trying to explain to you the female anatomy and how to have an orgasm. This was banned from the App Store a day after it was released, um, which I found to be incredibly disturbing because apps like this, wrist off, where you try and get as many strokes as you can in 10 seconds, <laughs> are still available, and also there's, uh, there's an app that I just found before I came today called Snappy Arses, where arses of different, ethnicity, uh, of different ethnicities of women, um, you get points for how hard you can slap their arses, and they make like really like grotesque noises when you slap their arses. So, that was one incentive, and then also, of course, the advertising we're surrounded by on a day-to-day -day basis, which I feel is completely contradictory in terms of its messaging to how to achieve um, sexual pleasure. Because it basically, um, I feel like, it, in Western culture, we're sold this idea of femininity as passive, um, as waiting for things to happen, as waiting for things to happen to you, as um, vulnerable, as thin, as weak. And actually, it took nearly three days for me to have an orgasm. I had to be pretty active. You know, this is not conducive to good sex, and it really, really saddens me. And then also during my research, these campaigns were released, which are essentially uh, gang rape. So I started to, de to design some jolly vaginas um, in protest. Um, these were some initial designs for the film. Uh, so they're, they're multi-plane. Uh, so yeah, you can see they've got depth. And I liked these designs because I felt they were simple and graphical. Um, but I realized if I was going to make these move, it would probably take about 25 years because I'd have to cut out um, 12 of these shapes to make a second. So I pretty swiftly moved away from this idea. Um, here are some more cutouts of um, penises as well. Um, and I moved back to 2D because I thought it was more of a practical approach, but I also thought that you could get more character, so you could use the pubes better, the labia better, and I felt like there was more of a sense of character with 2D. Um, <laughs> um, I then started um, designing for a specific people that I'd voice recorded. Luke and Sam would not be happy that their names are in this presentation. Um, <laughs> But these are two guys who you'll see in the film in a minute who had really amazing warm personas and um, were really fun to design for because as well they were a duo and they had a great rapport between them so it was trying to, trying to get a good balance in terms of character and scale as well. So, so this was the design I settled on and then this was the moment that I made. So I made a 15 second test of these guys moving um, and I sent it to it's nice that, and it's nice that got the, got the uh, funding from Channel 4, which was very limited. So I then, but it, I got the go ahead and I knew it'd be broadcast and I was super excited. So I sent out this 15 second clip um, to 12 of my favorite animators from all over the world, 11 of whom decided to collaborate with me on it which was so humbling, because I'd written about some of these people in my dissertation at uni. They were honestly like my absolute idols. Um, and what I did was I gave each of them their own character to take ownership of. So I'd done, uh, I'd probably sound recorded about 40 people and split and cut it down to about 20 and then gave each of them their own character, which I think worked quite well. I then did this color palette, because uh, I felt like if you're not paying people properly, you've got to give them their own create, create, you've got to give them creative freedom. But I thought that this color palette would link everything in nicely and make it a bit more cohesive. Um, and then I did one round of feedback for each of the creatives. So I, anima an I animated about half the film, and then about the rest, the rest was animated by these 12, 11 amazing people. So vagina feedback, most of the people who worked on it <laughs> were men as well, so vagina feedback was always quite um, funny because I didn't want to be too insensitive as if, like, to act as if they'd never seen a vagina before. But 
like for this guy, I was like, maybe you could make it a bit less like the beak of a bird. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe we could make the pubes a bit more like eyebrows so we could have a, a sense of the eyes. But it was only ever one round of feedback because I didn't want to take the piss. And then um, this is actually my favourite sequence from the film. Um, it was animated by an amazing guy called Mark Prendergast. Um, and I'll show you it moving. Basically, this ties a little bit back. So, so this, is, this, is, this is a sequence where the guy who's speaking is talking about how vaginas like Rubik's cubes and he doesn't really understand <laughs> what's going on. Shout out Freddie Taylor, he's here tonight. Um, so basically this ties a bit in with the aubergine at the beginning because he rendered it in CG first and then on paper, um, on like 200 pieces of paper, he took, he took two weeks off his job in Berlin to do this. Um, he, let's run that again. He, he used it as a stencil and did spray paint on paper, which I thought was like an amazing hybrid of the digital and the handmade. Um, so I'd like to thank It's Nice That. I'd like to thank Channel 4. I'd like to thank all the people who um, spoke and all the wonderful creatives who worked on it with me. Let's watch Private Parts. Clit. <laughs> I don't know. The JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Pants or a bikini that's too tight and pseudocrem. I think it's speculum because feminist groups used to meet and with a speculum look at their own and each other's vaginas. So just explore what is down there, that down there. Yeah, Rubik's Cube. Sometimes it's like quite straightforward, sometimes it doesn't work like that. You can be with girls for years. <laughs> I don't really understand. No, just joking. A vagina could never be ugly to me because it's a vagina. <laughs> it's a vagina. That's, That's it. Girls have got to I like. It I like be ugly to anyone. I like. I like the mystery of not knowing what each. I know that each and every vagina is going to be different. <laughs> Try to find. Clitoris, <laughs> <laughs> I think, orgasm. Hot heat. When when a girl is about to. There's a thing that you, you touch and, and I've got that snap like memory. You know what I, mean? I get that snap. I remember that shit. That eye rolling, clenching, looking back feeling. The pearl in there. The pearl inside the shells in the sea, you know? Shiny, shiny, shiny. While we're four playing and this and that and we're about to have sex, I've got to pull a hair out of my mouth. That is not sexy. Oh, I don't care. I'm down. <laughs> you eat them. <laughs> Oh, eat that. Girls, the jam has to be shaved. Like. Good, it has to be nice and fresh. Oh, they just need to shave. And tell them to put their clothes back on. Oh, I don't want to be one of those girls. Better get a bikini wax. Because, you know, I don't want to be like seen as disgusting. Why do you need to be bald down there? Is that necessary? It's a lot of money. It was definitely a thing of thinking that it was... There was something wrong. Or that it was... It was a dangerous thing to do, especially on, on your bathroom floor at five o'clock in the afternoon after you've eaten an avocado. If you can't even do it on your own and feel comfortable on your own, how are you supposed to orgasm with someone else? Masturbating, obviously, I'm thinking about someone I fancy or like Michael Fassbender. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, in your, you can make it happen and yet, when you've got an actual beautiful boy in front of you, why aren't I connecting? Like, for me, that's like, kind of a joke. Like, if someone's like, did you come? I'd be like, oh, it's not. And then we move on. Just started to feel like I could touch myself while I was having sex to help myself get there and that that wasn't an insult. More bean flicking, please. How do you do it? Have you done it? Because there was, like, be like, ew. It's like you wouldn't talk about it out loud because, you know, you'd probably be embarrassed. Don't get depressed, like... Just be, just be who you are. You do you, you do yourself, you get me? Good on you girls, just be good. No depressing moments, just stay good. If you do feel lonely, just give me a call 0721739. Done. <laughs>